EcoChain's Arctic Crisis is a 2-4 player game of strategy and survival where players connect species to create diverse ecosystems. With the goal of sustaining as many species as possible and preserving the valuable sea ice reserves necessary to support Arctic marine life. This is what the setup looks like for a 2 player game. In the center you have a draw pile for the species, action, event, and timer event cards. And next to it is the generation row which is where players will draw their species and action cards from. Above the generation row is room for placement of the timer event cards. And above that is a draw pile for the goal cards, and a row of four active goal cards. On the sides you have the gameplay areas for player 1 and player 2, where the players will place cards and build food webs. Now let's take a closer look at a species card. In the upper left and right corners is the species group icon which in this instance shows us that the ice copepod belongs to species group Z. And at the bottom are the prey icons that tell you which species groups can be used as food sources. So we know that the ice copepod can feed on species group IP. Some species cards also have sea ice icons in the lower right corner that tell you how many sea ice cards are needed at the base of the food chain to support it. Now let's set up our starter food webs. Each player starts by building two food webs with their four starter species cards. A phytoplankton, a krill, an ice algae, and an ice copepod. Connect these cards into two initial food webs, krill feeding on phytoplankton, and ice copepod feeding on ice algae. Each player also starts with seven sea ice cards, which may melt during gameplay. They are movable anytime sea ice is needed for species to survive. One of our food webs requires sea ice at the base, so let's move a sea ice card to the base of the food chain with the ice algae and ice copepod. On a player's turn, they can either migrate one of their species cards to another valid food source, or take a new card from the generation row and connect it to a valid food source in their food web. Whenever a card is removed from the generation row, a new one from the species card drop pile replaces it. The species cards taken from the generation row are used to build food webs by attaching a predator to a prey at the upper left or upper right corner of a species card. Here we know that a ring seal can prey upon an ice copepod because the ice copepod species group icon is also found within the ring seal's prey icons. But the ring seal needs two sea ice, as indicated by the sea ice icon in the lower right. So a second sea ice card must be placed at the base of the food chain to support it. It's important to remember that each species card can be a source of food for up to two predators. So this arctic cod can also prey upon the same ice copepod as indicated by its prey icons. The arctic cod also requires one sea ice, but as long as there is already at least one sea ice at the base of the food chain, then we don't need to add any more. But if a species that requires three sea ice, such as a polar bear, were added to the food chain, then we would need a third sea ice card at the base. Whenever an event card is drawn, it is resolved immediately. Read the text explaining both the cause and the game actions that occur. When the event card is resolved, place it in the discard pile next to the species drop pile, unless it is a timer event card, one with a timer event icon in the upper right corner. After it is resolved, place it within the timer event row. Timer event cards cause the melting of two or more sea ice for each player. If you have unused sea ice in your reserve pile, then just turn those cards over. But if you don't, then you will have to choose one or more sea ice cards at the base of your food chains and turn them over. That will result in one or more species, such as our polar bear which requires three sea ice, having to migrate, since that food chain will no longer be able to support them. Migrating species will first look for new food sources and required sea ice within the current player's food web. If there's no valid prey for it to feed upon, then it will migrate to the left and continue migrating left until it either finds a valid food source with enough available sea ice to support it, or else no food source exists or the required amount of sea ice isn't available, at which point it will die and must be placed in the discard pile. The blue action cards can be taken from the current generation row and played instead of species cards, and provide both a benefit to the player and also two victory points each at the end of the game. Read the text explaining both the cause and the game actions that occur to resolve the action card when it is played. Pay attention to the currently available goal cards. And any time during your turn when you meet the requirements, 
you may claim the card. Replace it with a new one. The game ends when the fourth timer event card appears, and scoring begins after this card is resolved. All players add up their victory points by counting all of the species cards within their food webs. Add two points for each action card they have played, and then add the points for any goal cards they have obtained. The player with the highest number of victory points wins.